So let's get started. Our first speaker is Marcus Chown, who is not only clever, but a very wise man too. In 1990, Marcus was science news editor at New Scientist when a brilliant young reporter started freelancing. You may have guessed that I was that freelancer and Marcus published my first story in New Scientist. Thank you, Marcus. You did. It was obviously a memorable occasion for me. In the intervening years, Marcus has gone on to stardom as an award-winning writer and broadcaster. Uh, he's written numerous books, including Quantum Theory Cannot Hurt You, Solar System for iPad, and Tweeting the Universe. His latest book, published last month, is What a Wonderful World, One Man's Attempt to Understand Everything. So Marcus is going to talk us about the Big Bang and how the universe emerged from nothing. Marcus. Mm -hmm. Hi. Oh dear, that's very loud, isn't it? Hi, it's fantastic to be here. Uh, it's fantastic to be invited. Um, it's an incredible privilege to be alive today at this moment. Um, previous generations would have killed for the picture of the universe that we have. Uh, we can see to the edge of the universe, to the horizon that bounds the observable universe, and we can see the content of the universe, which is about 100 billion galaxies, all like our Milky Way. But not only uh, can we, do we know the extent and content of the universe, we have a pretty good idea where it all came from. We believe it, w it came from, from nothing. Um, it, it arose in the fireball of the Big Bang about 13.82 billion years ago. And that fireball has been expanding and cooling ever since. And the galaxies like our Milky Way have congealed out of that material. Now, we, we believe this because of several pieces of observational evidence, and I'll just mention a few of them. The first, of course, is that the universe is expanding. Its galaxies are flying apart like pieces of cosmic shrapnel in the aftermath of, a, of an explosion. And if we imagine in our minds that expansion running backwards like a movie in reverse, we come to a time about 13.82 billion years ago when everything was compressed into a tiny, tiny volume. That was the Big Bang, the moment of the universe's birth. Now, when you squeeze something into a very small volume, it becomes very hot, as anyone who squeezed the air in a, in a bicycle pump knows. So the Big Bang was a hot Big Bang. It was indeed a fireball. But if you think of the fireball of an explosion, like an explosion of a stick of dynamite, or the explosion of a nuclear fireball, um, after a, an hour or a day or a week, that heat has dissipated into the environment, into the surroundings. But this was impossible with the Big Bang because the fireball of the Big Bang was bottled up in the universe, which by definition is all there is. So the heat of the fireball is still around us today, greatly cooled by the expansion of the universe. So it no longer is a kind of light that we can see, or we could see with our eyes. It's actually degraded to uh, microwaves, which are a kind of invisible electromagnetic radiation that uh, our, our microwave ovens use, that our mobile phones use, and our televisions use. So if you were to tune a television between the stations, something like 1% of the static or snow that you see on your screen has come directly from the Big Bang. And before it was intercepted by your satellite dish or aerial, it had been traveling for 13.82 billion years across space. And the last thing that it touched was the fireball of the Big Bang. So those are two pieces of evidence for the Big Bang, the expansion of the universe, and the fact that there is this relic heat radiation left over. I should tell you, actually, that the heat radiation is, accounts for 99.9% of all the photons or particles of light in the universe. So the stars and galaxies that we see with our telescopes account for only 0.1%. The overwhelming uh, amount of light in the universe is this afterglow of the Big Bang. And if we had microwave eyes, rather than eyes that actually see visible light, we would see the entire universe glowing like, uh, like the inside of a light bulb. Now this picture, the, the basic Big Bang picture that the universe began in a hot, dense phase and has been expanding and cooling ever since contradicts what we actually see 
in three major ways. One of those ways indicates, um, gives us a hint at what came before the Big Bang and how the universe came from nothing. So I'll just go through those things. The first thing is that um, the Big Bang model predicts that the galaxies, as they're flying apart, should be braked. They should be slowed down. You can imagine that their, their mutual gravity is like a, a kind of a, a web of, of invisible elastic between the galaxies that should be slowing them down. But in 1998, uh, it was discovered, contrary to all expectations, that the universe is, in fact, uh, its expansion is speeding up. And physicists have had to, po had to postulate the existence of dark energy, which is invisible, it fills all of space, and it has repulsive gravity, and its repulsive gravity is speeding up the expansion of the universe. Now, the dark energy... Um, when we, when we think about the dark energy, I mean, physicists are completely at sea. Our very best theory of physics, quantum theory, which uh, has given us lasers and computers and nuclear reactors, explains why this stage is solid, why the sun shines, fantastically successful. But when we use it to predict what the energy of empty space is, the energy of the dark energy, we get a number which is 1 followed by 120 zeros, bigger than what we observe. And that is the biggest discrepancy between an observation and a prediction in the history of science. So it's telling you that something is desperately, desperately wrong. And so really, when I talk to you about what happened, in, when, we, when we speculate about what happened in the beginning of the universe, you can tell that with, with those kind of things wrong, uh, I mean, we're not entirely on, on unshaky ground. The second thing that the Big Bang model does not predict is your existence. You sitting here, listening to me, waffling about the Big Bang. Because we think that, that the, the fireball of the Big Bang was very, very uniform. The matter in the, big, in the fireball was spread very, very evenly. And we, we can see this radiation, so we can see that that's the case. But we think there were tiny ir irregularities in this fireball at a level of a few parts in 100,000. And these had slightly stronger gravity than their surroundings. And so they dragged in material more effectively than their surroundings. And in a process which is akin to the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer, galaxies were built up. But it's impossible to build a galaxy like our Milky Way in 13.82 billion years. You need about 10 times as long as that. So physicists have had to postulate the existence of dark matter. This is invisible stuff. Uh, and it it's, it's, has to outweigh the visible stuff by about a factor of six. And this invisible stuff, its gravity, its enhanced gravity, it helps galaxies clump more quickly and can explain our existence. So this is two things we've now bolted onto the standard picture. Dark energy and dark matter. We don't know what dark matter is. It could be undiscovered particles. But of course, the reason that most people think it's undiscovered particles is because there's a lot of uh, particle physicists, there have been a lot of particle physicists in the last 30 years with nothing to do, uh, because really, they haven't had anything until the Large Hadron Collider. So they've, they've come up with thousands and thousands of, or hundreds and hundreds of possibilities. Um, but of course, it could be something like fridge-sized black holes, cosmic strings, all these kind of things. So this has actually been bolted on as well. Now, the third thing that the Big Bang does not predict is a bit more esoteric, and I haven't really got time to explain it, but the solution is to bolt on a third thing to the standard Big Bang model, and that thing is called inflation. And the idea is that preceding the Big Bang was a period of super-fast expansion of the universe. People compare expect the, the, the uh, uh, inflation uh, or they, they, they kind of compare it to the explosion of a hydrogen bomb compa compared to the um, stick of dynamite of the Big Bang expansion that occurred afterwards. Now, inflation was driven by the vacuum. So you need to just know a few things about the vacuum. In, in quantum theory, the vacuum is not empty. It's actually seething with energy. Also, the vacuum can have several states, energy states, just like... Uh, um, an atom. So the idea of inflation is that the universe began not in its current vacuum state, 
but in a much higher energy vacuum state. And this inflationary vacuum state had some amazing properties. First of all, it had repulsive gravity. So this repulsive gravity caused the vacuum to expand. But the second property it had, which is even more amazing, is that um, as the vacuum grew, it created more of itself. It created more energy. Uh, cosmologists call it the ultimate free lunch. It's kind of, imagine if you had a stack of banknotes in your hand and you moved your hand so they were twice as far apart and you found you've got twice as many banknotes. That's how the inflationary vacuum works. So as you get more and more, more, as it expands, it creates more of itself with more and more repulsive gravity and it accelerates faster and faster. But there's something else that you need to know about the inflationary vacuum, it's quantum. And what that, what that means is it's fundamentally unpredictable, fundamentally random. So if you imagine this, this inflationary vacuum, which is pretty much en it's empty of matter, it just contains energy, it's empty of matter, expands like a giant sea, growing faster and faster and faster, all over this sea, at random places and at random times, tiny bubbles form. And in these bubbles, the inflationary high energy vacuum decays into our vacuum. So what's it, in, what's it like inside one of these bubbles in the inflationary sea? Well, the, the, the enormous energy of the vacuum has to go somewhere, and where it goes in, is into creating matter, particles, and to heating it to a tremendous temperature. It goes into making big bangs. So in this picture, in this kind of majestic picture, we now have this ever-inflating sea of vacuum, and all over it, kind of like firecrackers, are Big Bang universes going off. So now we have the answer, really, about what, what was the Big Bang? What drove it, and what happened before? Uh, the Big Bang was, was, was triggered and driven by the decay of the inflationary vacuum. And what happened before the Big Bang? Well, there were many other Big Bangs as well, as is not unique. Um, so where did the, the next question is, we know where the Big Bang, what came before the Big Bang was inflation. So where did inflationary vacuum come from? Well, it turns out that, that quantum theory, which is our very best description of the, of the microscopic world of, of physics, allows energy to appear out of absolutely nothing. And in order to start an inflating universe, you only need something the equivalent of about a kilogram uh, of mass of inflationary vacuum. That's all you need. And so the laws of physics allow this kilogram to just spontaneously appear out of nothing and begin inflating and creating Big Bang universes. Now, if you're like me, you probably are already thinking, OK, that's fine, but where did the laws of physics come from? And it's possible that we're always going to get these questions, what happened before, and it may not be answerable within, uh, within the bounds of science. And I'm reminded of uh, something that happened to the mathematician, philosopher, Nobel Prize winner, Bertrand Russell. He was giving a popular talk about the universe, and uh, he was describing the galaxies and the stars and the planets. And he got to the end, and he asked for questions, and one old lady put up her hand, and she said, Professor Russell, that's total rubbish you've been talking. Um, everybody knows the universe is a flat plate resting on the back of a turtle. And Bertram Russell said, no, no, well, he, quick as a flash, he said, well, what do you think the turtle is resting on? And the woman said, I know your game. You're not going to catch me out. It's turtles all the way down. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>